Yeah, I want to drag it to the side. Okay. Okay. Very good morning. So let me get my clicker. Okay. So good morning to everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, PyCon Malaysia for inviting me as a keynote speaker. Uh, uh, when, when I saw the invitation and then they posted my face in the social media, I was told that I'm going to tell some stories, fun stories to you all. So I was like, okay, I'm scratching my head. What kind of stories that I need to tell you all for this morning that will be fun and interesting? Okay, so as you know the background, my background, I'm doing a lot of uh, work on data analytics, machine learning, AI. So I, I, was, I was thinking that, okay, the fun thing probably is we thought the quest to find the answer to life, to everything and to the universe. So I was like, okay, is it related to Python? <laughs> okay, let's find out. Okay, so the agenda today is uh, I'm going to talk about how do we build a machine, okay, to answer to everything, to the universe and to the life, okay. Of course, uh, I'm going to talk about AI, okay. So why, where are we in AI now? Why is AI? Why is machine learning? Okay, so when we talk about AI, we talk about what? Okay, we are computer scientists, we are programmers, we talk about algorithm, okay. Then how do we find the ultimate algorithm? To build a machine, okay, intelligent enough, okay, they are able to provide the answer to everything, to life, to the universe, okay. Then we end with the conclusion and takeaway. Okay, uh, I'm not sure whether I'm allowed to ask questions, but I will prepare slide do anyway. Okay, so if you have any question later at the end of the talk, you can ask. You can actually scan the QR code now. The the group the code number is V two eight nine. Or you just type si sli dot do slide do and we can ask some question. Uh, the thing is, uh, I'm not the intelligent machine, <laughs> so maybe I cannot answer to provide you answer to everything, to life, to the universe. Okay. Uh, so if you already scan, you probably have see something like that. So you probably have a lot of question. So the question that you think, if somebody posted that you think that you also might want to uh, get answer to, you can put up. Okay. So those questions that is voted up will be shown on top, then post probably that will be get reply easy. Okay? So the code is we two eight nine. Okay, a brief introduction of myself. Uh you can call me KH or Quite Home. Uh I'm the GD in machine learning, Google Developer Expert. So like explained by the MC yourself, James, uh, I'm actually working in ADA as a principal machine learning engineer. So I actually do a lot of analytics on uh, advertising data, building segment, machine uh, modeling to understand customer. Uh, I also have a, a kind of a company started, AI company, uh, it's called Conetics. Before that I was working at edX as a senior data scientist, uh, ASEAN Data Analytics Exchange. And, uh, before that I was working in Nielsen as a senior manager of data science. And before I left industry, for industry I was working at MMU as a senior lecturer for 15 years. From 2001 to 2016, so I kind of left the industry for three years already. Uh, I actually managed two committees in Malaysia. Okay, uh, I managed the TensorFlow and Deep Learning uh, Group, and uh, I also managed the R User Group Malaysia. Okay, so the topic today is we are living in a world where we feel that one day our machine that we build, we have the capability to build a machine that are able to provide answers to us. Okay. This is the time that we feel that machines are very powerful now. Okay, it can actually do analysis for us. Okay, it can actually do prediction for us. Can predict, okay? and it can actually even provide you relevant recommendation what to do. Okay, if you talk about analytics, you have what we call descriptive analytics. We have predictive analytics, and then uh, we have prescriptive analytics. Okay, so predictive analytics. I'm sure every one of us are. Uh, actually having a lot of uh, benefit from this predictive analytics. Who today come by driving? Do you use Waze? So Waze a lot of predictive analytics for you. He predict the traffic for you. He tell you what is in front of you. What kind of route you should take. Okay. 
If you use, if you check your weather, that's also predi prediction. Okay, some part of the world, Malaysia weather, no need to see uh. If you see Malaysia weather, what's the, what's, what's the weather everyday prediction? Four o'clock rain. Okay, if you turn on the TV every day, the, the, when you look at the weather news, it's always the same, four o'clock rain. Okay, when you look at some other countries, the prediction is quite, quite, quite accurate. For example, like Japan, okay, when they say uh, at 12 p.m. it rain, most people you can see at around 11 people start carrying umbrella. Okay, so the prediction is quite strong. Okay, so we feel that machine now able to do analysis, able to do prediction, able to even provide you recommendation. Okay, so what you can do? It can actually provide you answer to the to everything in life. Okay, hopefully one day la. Okay. So what is the answer to everything in life? Anybody knows the answer? What's the answer? 42. Yes, forty two. <laughs> Very good. You know the answer. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Forty two is not the answer, la, huh? <laughs> But it's fun to know that you know what is forty two. Okay, those who do not know 42, go and Google what is a 42 answer. Okay, so we know that uh, we live in a world now that computer has been very fast. Okay, if you study in computer science, in IT last time, we know there's something called Moore's Law. Okay, every 18 months, it double up. Okay, so you see computer has been growing as exponential growth. Okay, the most powerful things now is not on your desk, it's not at home, it's not in your office, it's actually in your pocket. Okay, now, now your phone is even more powerful than your laptop. Okay your uh, Note Plus, Note 10 uh, Plus has a 12 gig RAM. Your computer got 12 gig RAM or not? 12 gig RAM, okay? And then your, your phone now can store up to one terabyte, okay? So sooner or later, everything is on your hand. It's very powerful, okay? So you can see the growth of computing power actually, okay, it's just like how many years ago, if you look at it, okay? It started around 40 years ago, 50 years ago. So in 50 years ago, we have really achieved a very high computing power, okay, a machine, okay, that has been growing at a very fast rate. So one day people say, you come, your computing power will lead to something we call singularity. Anybody know what is singularity? Anybody heard of the word singularity? See, it's like one day, the machine is going to be as, uh, as intelligent as human, uh, okay? So you can see, a lot of time now, we even, some of us, because we watch a lot of movies, right? okay, some of us even believe the machine is already more intelligent than uh, a human. Okay? So, if you look at the, if you are into business or if you are into research, okay, you should always look at what the Gartner hype cycle. Okay? So, you look at the Gartner hype cycle now, where is AI, all this augmented reality, AI, what's the, what's the most people talk about technology nowadays? You have AR, AI, okay, all these cloud based, they are all in the top now. Peak, okay. Everybody is talking about it. If you are into research, this is the area you want to look into because that's the area where a lot you can do a lot of publication. If you are a startup, these are things you want to talk about because this is what we see like to hear. Okay. Nowadays you go and look for if you listen to any pitch pitch by any startup, any startup also they say they all do AI la, ML la, everybody will do that because that is the keyword that you have to throw in. If you don't throw in, you are actually outdated startup. Okay? So these are the things that uh, actually now a uh, uh, big hype or uh, uh, people talk about, uh, people are putting a lot of effort into it and then a lot of... But fundamentally, what is AI? Okay? So the word AI is artificial intelligence. Okay? So, what is the biggest breakthrough AI has been achieved that everybody is talking about? It's about three years ago, okay, where a company called DeepMind, okay, belonged to Google, developed a, a, a program called AlphaGo, and able to beat the best human player, chess, uh, Go player. Okay, have you seen the documentary available on YouTube? Okay, it's very emotional, isn't it? When, you, when the, finally the third game, the human managed to beat the machine, it's like you want to cry. Okay? It's like, oh, so emotional. How can the human lost to a, a, a machine? Okay? But you know, quite a sad part of the whole documentary. Because when you play Go Chess, okay, when you play a human with, with a human, there's an emotional involvement. Right? You can see, you know, you're going to attack the human. You can see that he has fear on you. Then you can play your game tactically. But you see what happened to the Lisado? There's no machine. He was looking at the guy, the guy is just pressing the key for him. 
Okay, he cannot feel the fear. He cannot impart the fear to uh, his opponent. Okay, this is a bad thing about um, AI. Isn't it? Okay, AI there's no emotion. Okay, so AI can detect cancer, but do you want a machine to tell you you have cancer? Okay, it's very sad, isn't it? Okay, the machine just tell you, sir, you have cancer. Nine nine point nine nine percent accurate. <laughs> then I said, oh, what should I do now? Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. So that's a that's a bad thing, okay. Another thing that all of us probably have a lot of uh, 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 encounter now, smart speaker is very cheap, okay. One Google Home Mini probably cost you about hundred and thirty ringgit or hundred forty ringgit, or we have Alexa Echo, we have even our phone Siri, Google Assistant. So smart speaker now we can actually have, you know, very normal human conversation with our phone or our speaker, okay. This is what happens when we are very, very bored. What we do? Siri, how are you? Okay. So, or Google, can you tell me a joke? Okay. Or Google, I'm bored. Okay. Can you uh, play a game? I'm sure you've done that. Isn't it? No. Uh. <laughs> Shy. Uh. <laughs> okay. Another thing that AI is very, very, very uh, big into is talking about autonomous driving. Okay. To us, human. We start learning about driving. Once we learn to drive, it's in us forever. Okay. But to teach a computer to drive is also simple. There's a lot of things involved. Okay. Like understand the sign, the all the road sign. Okay. Understand what's going on around you, surrounding you. Okay. Understand when to break, what to what what uh, constantly need to predict what's going to happen. Okay, the car constantly need to predict what will happen. Okay, for example, the car might overtake. There's a pedestrian must cross the road. There's an animal might jump to the road. Okay, or something will drop or object on the road. Constantly, the machine has to understand what's going on. Okay, so you see, autonomous driving is something that everybody is putting effort into. Okay, but it's not an easy problem to tackle. Okay, we've seen that uh, in US, autonomous driving car right, like way more or whatever. Do you think this car if you bring to Malaysia, it will work? Okay, we Malaysian can also cannot drive properly our road, isn't it? Okay, so it's not so simple problem to tackle. Okay, so what is basically AI? Okay, so AI is something where we have a computer science specialization, where we might try to build intelligent machine, okay, that work and react like human, and even have a, some sort of logic like human. Okay, so where is AI now? Why is AI now? Okay, so AI is not something just recently, 10 years or 20 years ago, okay, started in around 1950s. Right? Okay. Uh, there are uh, AI specialization in, uh, in Malaysia, in UM, there are people who study AI like 30 years ago. Okay. But the AI 30 years ago and AI today, okay. AI itself, it has something uh, encompassed a new field that people about ML machine learning, in your 20 years, people talk about deep learning. Okay, so you study, when you study AI, when you talk about AI, you cannot run away doing machine learning and deep learning. Okay, I do a lot of training. Sometimes we say uh, we want to teach you about AI, then we teach them about machine learning. Then they complain. They say, why am I legit learning learning machine learning? I want to learn AI. But machine learning encompass uh, AI encompass machine learning and deep learning. So why is machine learning? Okay, why is machine learning? Okay, so how do how to make a machine learn? Okay, how to make a machine learn? Okay, how do human learn? Remember how you learn? Don't remember? Eh? Okay, I'm so old already. Forgot how I learn. We learn from experience, isn't it? Human learn from experience. From young, a small boy, if I touch a kettle, it's hot, I remember forever it's hot. You ask the boy to touch again, he say, no, 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 this is very hot, I won't touch. Okay? So human learn from experience. Okay? But a lot of time we don't learn, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. We all human. Okay? After experience we still want to do. Okay? Then how do program works? Okay? If you are a programmer, we are a raw program. Okay, 
how do how do we write program? We write instruction in it. Okay, we build in the instruction. So all the for, uh, apps or software system that we build all follow instruction. Okay, then from there, how do we how do we train the machine? How do we do machine learning? Okay, machine learn from what? Okay, machine learn from the only source of its data. Okay, so a lot of time, a lot of people want to say, I want to do AI. Okay, or a lot of startup they say, Oh, I'm an AI company. Then you ask them where you get your data. What is data? Okay, so the main ingredient of AI or machine learning or deep learning is data. Okay, if you talk to any company, if they don't have data, then you cannot do machine learning. So data is very, very, very precious now. It's considered the new oil. Okay, I'm sure we use a lot of free stuff in this. We have we have Facebook allow you to upload, connect to a lot of friends all for free. Why are they free? Okay, then you have a YouTube allow you to upload unlimited video for free, storage for free. Why is it free? Okay, then you have a lot of stuff like uh, Instagram also allow you to allow upload photo all for free. There is a theorem say there's no free lunch in there, but everything is free. How come? Why is it free? Okay, you buy a computer, you have to buy, you have to pay for Windows license. You buy a phone, will you pay for Android license? No. Why is it free? Okay, because of data. Isn't it? So data is a new. Oh. What's going on? Resetting is it? Okay, how many AI people to fix a projector? <laughs> Is it the resolution? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Okay, so data is a new art. Whoever owns the most data will be the most valuable co valuable company in the world. Okay, Facebook owns what? Facebook owns Instagram. Facebook owns WhatsApp. You say, "Oh, I'm not in Facebook." Too bad, uh, You still Instagram. Isn't it? I'm not using Instagram. Too bad, uh, I'm sure every one of you is using. Hundred percent of you are using WhatsApp. Who is sending message using SMS nowadays? Still got uh, Don't be shy. <laughs> no, isn't it? Okay. Nobody is using SMS. You see, you sign up for any plan, they tell you, I give you 100 SMS, no use at all. You only really use one. Okay? So data is a new oil. Okay? The company with the most data can do a lot of things. You can do analysis, you can do prediction, you can even do recommendation. So you connect to Google CEO in that picture. Okay? How important is AI now to humanity? Eh? How important? Okay? It is important when people invite, uh, when human history of human started to uh, uh, invented fire, okay? Because when we have fire, we, we can keep ourselves warm, we can cook our food, we will not get food poisoning anymore, okay? Then the next wave of invention is electricity, okay? Imagine our life now without electricity. Can you imagine that? One day your house blacked out for one hour, you feel like the end of the world, okay? And you cannot get out of the house because your auto gate is doesn't function. You feel like you're in prison, okay? So you can see the the people the, the, the how the people look at AI now is actually the third wave of invention that's so important to humanity. Okay, you look at uh, 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 the quote from uh, Andrew Ng, AI is a new electricity. Okay, it powers everything. Okay, it power our phone, it power our laptop, it power our, our smart speaker, it power our home, everything. Okay. So, how do I become Somebody, uh, a, a machine learning expert, or data scientist, or AI uh, AI expert. Okay, can I can I be a, just a normal programmer? What's the difference? What do I need? What what do I, what kind of paradigm do I need to shift? Okay. So if you look at the classical programming versus machine learning, how do we do classical programming? Okay. Remember just now we talk about programming. We need to do all of uh, all the um, rules. Okay. We need to define all the rules. So if, else, this, that, that's all the rules. Then you put in your data, you write your program, you get the result. Okay? This is normal that we have been learned programming during our study time. Okay? Something like this. We have a flow chart. So before we can do our program, we need to define all the rules. Okay? So what is the weakness of this 
structure. The weakness of this is the rule change. We have to code all over again. We have to compile all over again. Okay, so that is classical programming. Okay, then what is machine learning? Okay, machine learning. The difference is I do not need to write the rules. Okay, I put in the data. I put in the answer. Okay, that means somebody have to label the data, the answer. Then the machine will find out how the data is related to the answer. It will find the rules by itself. Just like if I want to train a, a, a machine to understand the picture of a cat and dog. Okay. So what I do, I find a lot, a lot of pictures of cats, I label this is a picture of cats, and then I find a lot of pictures of dogs, I label this is a picture of dogs. Okay. Then the machine will understand how a picture of cat picture will look like. Okay. Then you will find all the rules. Okay. With this, I do not need to write how a cat will look like. It has a whiskers, it has a ear, whatever. Okay. So all the rules can be defined by the machine. So it's much more flexible. Okay. So usually I use cats and dogs because it's easy to understand. But imagine now you are in the manufacturing. Okay. I want to find whether use a camera to detect whether the product is defect or no defect. Okay. Then I have a lot of picture. I show you the picture of a normal product. Then I show you the picture of defect. Then the machine will learn to know how a defect product will look like. So you actually can do the de de uh, defect uh, uh, detection. So it looks something like this, okay, in machine learning. First main ingredient of uh, to build an um, uh, intelligent machine, you must have data, okay. So let's say I have a raw data, okay. Then I will build a model to train it, okay. I build a model. The model will train to understand how to differentiate. For example, here the the blue, the red, the orange, and the black. Okay. All the algorithm after I train, okay. Then I verify. In the future, you are able to predict. Okay, this document is this this product is red or blue or orange, okay or black. Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, so in machine learning we have something we call supervised machine learning. Okay, supervised means you label data. Okay, so the main problem is labeling. Okay, who is going to label my data? For example, uh, yesterday we talked about, uh, it, uh, we, we went to a company, we talked to the company, he said, I want to predict whether share market, this uh, share market, okay, so you want to predict something like that, okay, then you need to label, uh, and what kind of trend is considered risk, high risk, or what kind of trend is considered low risk, somebody has seen the label for you, okay, so there are a lot of companies out there, the whole, uh, uh, the, the company operation is to help people to label data. There's a Malaysia with a startup called, I um, don't know whether you heard before, it's called Superhand. Have you heard before? They actually outsource people to label data for them. So, to build, has a, coming back to as a programmer, what is the basic step to build a program okay, or a system? Okay? We know algorithm. Okay? So, basically, if you understand the algorithm, okay, then we can actually break it down and we write, you can write the code. Okay. So what is algorithm? Okay. So algorithm is a set of rules that we follow, isn't it? Okay. So especially in computer, with the right algorithm, then we can build an intelligent machine. Okay. So far okay? Understand? Okay. So how many algorithms out there that we have? Okay. How many algorithms out there that we have? Probably during our study time, degree time, we have gone through a few algorithms, but we do not know actually all these algorithms, okay, is all related. Okay. So first algorithm is called inverse deduction. Okay. Inverse deduction, the whole purpose of this algorithm is, is to fill in the gap uh, to find new knowledge. Okay. So the word inverse means okay, you can actually get the information when you do something inversely. For example, it says 4 plus x equal to 6. Okay, 4 plus x equal to 6. So why is x? You have to minus it. 6 minus 4, so x is 2. Okay, so you inversely, you can find the, the information knowledge. Okay, so that's called inverse deduction. Okay, so one of the ways algorithm okay, that people use inverse deduction is called symbolic programming. Okay, anybody have learned like list or prologue before? Okay, those are all inverse uh, deduction or symbolic programming. Okay, so example of software that use 
this uh, inverse deduction is mathematical or leaves or prologue. So you can see it's something like it is a lot of symbol. Okay. For example, what is your name? You use a symbol. Okay. You can represent it. Then you can actually find out what is the value of that symbol. Okay. So for example, like this, a divided by b. Okay. Then c, you can actually get d. What is c? So you can say c inversely. You can actually find out that it's actually d multiplied by a divided by b. So this is inverse deduction. Okay. Okay. So inverse deduction, this algorithm has been around for some time. It has its pros and cons. Okay. Of course, the pros is it has able to uh, discover new concept or knowledge. Okay. From the data. Okay. So you can dig up new knowledge. Okay. From the data. Okay. And then you can su suggest algorithm through deduction. Okay, you can deduct new information from there. Okay, so what is a con? Okay, it doesn't work very well with noisy data. If your data is not very well, then you cannot deduct anything. Okay, and you can get something what in machine learning called overfitting problem. Okay, overfitting problem means your machine, the algorithm work very well in your training time, but it doesn't work very well in the testing time, the real deployment time. So that is the first algorithm. You might not encounter this, okay, but it's out there. The algorithm is called analogical learning. Okay? Analogy. What's analogy? Similar in it. Finding similar. Okay? So analogical learning means you find a similar between two entities, okay, between the target source and the uh, source entity and the target entity. Then you transfer a property. Okay? For example, you look at here, okay, I have all these uh, blue dots. I can classify as class A. So imagine maybe I can say all these blue dots are all high income level people. I label them as high income level people. Then I have the green dot here is all media income and maybe the red dot here all low income. So now suddenly I have a new new data point here. So this new data point should I classify as high income, middle income, or low income? How do I do that? Okay. So I one of one of the techniques we are used is what we call the master algorithm is called canal or support vector machine okay or probably you heard before something called svm okay so the two algorithm we not many people use is called svm or we call knn k nearest neighbor okay so for example like this okay so if i have one neighbor then k equal to one okay when i have one neighbor then k equal to one Classify this K, this new point here, this green point here, has blue. Because I only take one neighbor to classify what I am. Okay? But if I say I need three neighbors to, to, to make a decision. Okay? So what is my nearest neighbor now if I have three? One blue, two red, isn't it? Okay? So you can see this green color here. How many neighbors they have if I have three? One blue, two red. So two red now, what will happen to this green point now? You classify as red. Okay, so this is analogy algorithm. Okay, a lot of time when we do classification, we use this. Depend what is the value of k, whether k equal to one or two or three or four or what. Okay, so for this case here, the classification can change depend on the value of the k. Okay, so this k and n. We call support vector machine SVM. If you have uh, uh, not heard about AI. About 10 years ago, this is the most powerful machine learning algorithm out there. It can do a lot of classification for you. Okay? A lot of hospitals last time use this to detect whether a disease or whatever. Okay? So support vector machine, for example, I have here. Okay? I have the red star and the green triangle. Okay? How do I separate these two class? Okay? How do I separate it? I can draw many lines to separate it. I can draw this orange line. I can draw this black line or I can draw this blue line. Okay? So depending on which line that I draw, okay, if this, for example, if everything uh, uh, beyond this side of the blue line, this will be classified as red. Anything at uh, this side of the blue line okay, will be classified as green. So if any dot fall in between, okay, uh, whether here or here, the color will be different. So I can draw the separator many, many, or we call classifier. So in support vector machine, what it will do is you find a line, a separator, where maximum the distance between these two points. 
the furthest point. So if any, any uh, point above this line will be red star, any point below this line will be green triangle. Okay? So this is how the support vector machine will work. Okay? So support vector machine or this KNN, a lot of time they use it where? They use it in all your recommendation system. Okay, like product, like Amazon recommend or in Netflix. Okay, a lot of people use that to recommend. Because what? Because whatever you like, if I like the similar thing, probably I can re recommend the similar product to me. Okay, that's how analytical learning works. So one of the techniques that people commonly use is called collaborative tutoring. Okay, so for example, this guy he buy pizza, he buy salad, he buy coke. Okay, and this another guy similar to him also is a cyclist. He also like to eat pizza. He also like to eat salad. So what would you recommend? You recommend coke to him. Okay, even though coke is not healthy. Okay, so but this is what similar people, similar taste. You recommend that kind of product to him. Okay, so this is a good thing about this recommendation is he understand the user behavior. You actually recommend a product based on the behavior. Okay. How does this affect you? Whenever you use your membership card, then they know what you buy. Okay, you go uh, Aon Big use a member card. Okay, you use uh, just go uh, card. You use all your member point whatever. Every time you buy something, you collect point. At the same time, they collect what you buy. Then you know what's your age group because you when you fill out a form, you need to put in your age, your income level, your home address. Then you know what the segment you are, what's the age group, whatever. Then you can actually do product recommendation. Okay, so what is the pros and cons for this analytical learning? Okay, it's very powerful, it's, it's very well in practice, but uh, it can be very tricky because how do you separate the best classifier? And sometimes the, the computational is very intensive and memory intensive when you have a large data set. Next algorithm is called evolution. Okay. How human being is the most powerful, powerful uh, living being on planet Earth? How? Because through history, we have evolved to be the most powerful human. Okay. Imagine if we can transfer the same concept of evolution to our programming. If the machine over time can learn, then it can improve itself. Okay. Then it can actually choose the best program to run. So the evolution, of course, maybe we have learned before, we have something we call genetic algorithm. Okay? So genetic algorithm is, is used by Charles Darwin in the evolution theory. So basically, it has algorithm to do the natural selection. Okay? So natural selection, okay? where the fittest individual, okay, after every evolution, the fittest individual that stay on, that gene is the one who we pick okay, to pass to the next generation. You know why is the um, uh, most most animals or most living being? What is the purpose in life? A small organism or bacteria. What is a? Have you ever wondered what is a, a, a purpose of a bacteria? Reproduce it. Okay. Every time you just have to get infect somebody, get a new host, reproduce, same like virus, then mutate then pass the gene to the next next uh, generation okay human being also in it okay that's why we have uh, our in, in our culture we have to get married then they say when you get married then people start asking you when do you have kids huh? okay why because you need to pass your gene to the next generation okay why because the survival of the fittest okay but actually okay this is very deep talk here but actually, we are actually the survivor of fittest. Do you agree? Why? Because out of so many, so many sperms, uh, you are being one selected. Actually. Okay? So this um, most master algorithm is what we call genetic programming. Okay? So you look at the evolution now, okay? This is where we are. Uh, slowly we are gonna evolve to here already. From a monkey, stand tall, now we are gonna be hunchback. So in genetic programming, okay, it actually involves a technique where 
You start from the population where she's unfit. Maybe your program doesn't perform very well. Okay? The program doesn't perform very well. But you use evolution, it learns, okay, and slowly apply natural genetic selection to the program. Then the program will improve itself. Okay? So for example, something like this, you have a lot of uh, a, 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 a program or function. Okay? Then what you do is you cross over the function, okay, and then you see by crossing over the program or the function or whatever, which one will, will actually perform the task better. At the same, at same time, you also want to do some mutation. Okay? Because when you do mutation, okay, you find some other technique that have not uh, done before. You can end up with a for example here, imagine here is just program one, program two, program three. But here you can see now you have multiple combinations. Okay? The combination of the program that has uh, survived, okay, are able to perform the task with the most efficient, that program will move on to the next stage. Okay? So that's genetic algorithm. Uh, I have a video, I don't know whether I can play this. So what happened is this person, he used the same genetic algorithm to a robot. So this robot will try to learn, just like any living being. So when he learns, then he updates himself. Okay? He print, he go back and do a 3D printing whenever a new version comes out. Just like human. Uh. Okay? He create a new baby, then the baby learn again, then create another baby. Okay? So basically, you can apply this concept to a robot. Robots can actually learn something that if something that he feels that it does not fit the whole environment, he can actually make some changes and then he will set to the 3D printing to, to, to print out new new body part or new uh, limb or whatever. Okay, um, no sound, never mind. So basically what happened is this robot learned to, uh, learn to walk and slowly he Using genetic algorithm, he actually evolved himself and improved further. Remember when we start to learn to walk? Same as. Okay, never mind, it's a long video. You can go back and have a look. Okay. So, genetic uh, programming, what's the pros and cons? So just like any uh, any living being in the environment, we do not tell specifically uh, a very specific instruction what you need to do. You can learn itself, okay, about the environment, then how to tackle the problem. Okay, it can actually give you a very near optimal solution. Okay, the con is, okay, you have a lot of parameter to choose from. Okay, and sometimes you might not find the best solution. Okay, you might not find the most best solution, and you need, like humans, eh, we evolve how many thousand years? A lot of thousand years to get where we are now. Eh. Can you imagine you have your computer program need to evolve many, many, many generations to get a, read, a good com a, a program? Okay? So it takes a lot of computation time to achieve an optimal solution. Next algorithm is called Bayesian. Okay? Those who study statistics surely know what Bayesian is all about. So Bayesian inference is basically is a cycle inference where you always update your probability when you have a new evidence. Okay, you have your new evidence. Okay, so one of the master algorithm is called probability inference. Inference. Okay, so if you remember your stats, okay, so the uh, Bayesian rules is like this. Okay, the event, the probability of event H to happen depend on E. Dependent on this is actually you have a prior and the likelihood of an event to happen. Okay. So the mic no. <laughs> okay. So if you remember your probability for Bayesian is something like this. Okay. You need to have a prior. Prior means before you do any inference, you need to have a, some basic uh, 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 probability that you think that how this will happen. Then you update the probability as you go along. Okay. So the formula is you have a probability of class before seeing anything. Okay. Then you have a condition. Okay. Then after that you calculate. Okay. You update your posterior probability. Okay. Depend on the 
uh, the condition that you have, okay? And then you divide by the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the probability of the uh, unconditional data, okay? Anybody still remember this? Okay. Or anybody have forgotten this? Okay. So a lot of time we do not like our probability and statistics because the teacher or teacher is very boring. He just derive formula and then you don't know what he's trying to say. Okay. So basically, this is the formula. But how do you apply in real life? Okay. So the first uh, application of Bayesian, which is very useful to us, is the email uh, spam filtering. Okay. So remember, the formula is you have some prior, then you predict whether it's a spam or no spam. Okay. So what is a prior? Prior means based on all the email, I say eighty percent of my email, eighty percent of our email is not spam. 20% is spam. Okay, so I already have a concept. That is my prior probability. Okay, then what will happen when I receive the email? How do you classify email as spam or no spam? In your own standard, lah. How? When you see all those words like private part or Vicra or all those things, you know most likely it's spam. Right? Or you can say money like uh, a keyword like get rich, millionaire. Uh, or I love you very very much. Okay, all those Macau scam. Okay, then you see. Oh, then if I see those words, then I Im I will actually reduce my probability that this is no longer not a spam. It's a spam. Okay, so this is how Bayesian works. Okay, by looking at the probability, and then when you get new evidence, you update your probability again. Okay, and it should be very powerful that. Okay, at one time we can manage to filter a lot of email spam or no spam. But of course, uh, now we have more and more better technique. Okay? You cannot even fool. Because sometimes when people spell Vigra, they don't spell V I A. How do you spell Vigra? V I A G R A. Isn't it? Then they spell V1, then A, then G, then A, something like that. So they can, they can try to trick the system. But now we have better system to actually know what is a, a spam or no spam. So, why is the uh, uh, pros and cons Bayesian? So, it's uh, very, hard, uh, very easy to interpret the result. Uh, you can update the parameter. Okay, the cause is you need to know all the prior. Okay, you need to know the prior, and the prior can be very subjective. Okay. So the last algorithm that people commonly now use is how do we write algorithm that inspire like our brain? Okay, because the best thinking machine is our brain. Okay. So we can actually build algorithm where we try to. Uh, uh, build a machine similar to how our brain works. Okay, our brain is a lot of neuron, so we can actually build something we call neural artificial neural network or ANN. Okay, so basically you can perform a task without any program. Okay, and the master algorithm is called back propagation. Okay, so before we go further, how does our brain work? Okay, actually our brain is very interesting uh, organ of our body. First thing is our brain is very uh, 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 flexible or something we call plasticity. Okay, imagine your brain where you actually uh, detect the signal of a sound. Okay, if you cut down the signal from your ears, you can actually use your the part of signal brain that process sound to see. Okay, so this is what happened to blind people. Isn't it? If I cannot see, but how do I navigate around? I can use sound. Isn't it? Okay, I can use sonar. I can actually navigate around. Similarly, you can just use the tongue to navigate around. Okay, your tongue you can taste the the taste of uh, sweet or sour, or whatever. If you put a sensor in your tongue, you also can navigate around. Okay, of course, the uh, people who use sonar to navigate around. Okay, seems like everything is no battery today. Okay. So you human can actually use sound to navigate around, just like um, dolphin or whales. They can use a lot of sound so they can navigate uh, a surrounding what is inside them when they're in the sea. Okay. So for artificial neural network like this, this is our brain. How do we transform that to something what we can do with a computer? Okay. We build an artificial neural network where instead of the signal in the brain, which is chemical, the signal from our machine will be the data. Okay. So the data will feed to our machine. So we process, then we calculate the weight for every single signal, 
just like when we, write, when we, when we learned about uh, math last time, we have something we call y equal to mx plus c. Remember that? y equal to mx plus c. So when you want to do the calculation, what you need to determine? The slope, isn't it? The m and the c. The y and the x you have. Okay. So similarly, the, the slope is the weight that you need to calculate. Okay. So from there, okay, you can actually use a technique called back propagation. Okay, you can actually go back and fix if there's any error. Okay, so machine whenever they they get the data, first thing when they predict, okay, the weight might not might not be correct. Okay, so you need to go back and fix the weight. For example, here you can actually see you can it was this is the weight and it was wrong. Then here you go back and change the weight. Okay, so the weight needs to be updated. Then that's how the machine will correct the error. Okay using a technique called back propagation. So the backbone of deep learning is ANN, artificial neural network. Okay? So deep learning is actually a program, okay? machine learning uh, algorithm, where you try to inspire the machine to think like the brain. Okay? So from there, for example, the picture of cat, now you can actually go through and learn all the features of a cat, then you can determine how many percent is a cat. So neural network, the pros and cons is, okay, uh, it's actually very flexible because the same algorithm that you uh, uh, train to learn the picture of cats and dogs, you can just use it to train whether a product is defect or no defect, okay, or you can train a picture of a human being, okay, it's very flexible, okay. It's also able to build more powerful uh, system when you add more and more layers, okay. Of course, the cons is, because the neural network itself, it can, you have a lot of hidden layer. It's very hard to interpret the result. Okay? Sometimes people ask you why the machine did give you this result. It's very hard to explain the result. Okay? And then, to do a very good AI system, you need a lot, a lot, a lot of data. Okay? And most of the time, the most difficult part is getting a lot of data and label data. Okay? So you can see what have we done. Okay, you can see that the five algorithm that we have that will can actually help us to build a more intelligent machine. Okay, so that is what we call the master algorithm. Okay, you can actually combine all these five algorithm, you can build a a, a good uh, uh, machine that can actually encompass all these. Okay, so you can see just now from the start we have the evolution. Okay, so evolution means similar to the genetic, you can actually pick the fittest gene, and you mutate them, you find an optimal solution. Okay? From there, you can actually inspire the brain. Okay? Similar to our brain, you can have the connectionist. Okay? Then the symbolic, you can actually use a symbol to do inverse deduction. You have the Bayesian, okay? then you can actually do probability. Okay, so uh, Bayesian, you have the probability, and the last one is the analogy. Okay, similar uh, finding similar properties. So you can see this is what they have: the symbolist, the connectionist, the Bayesian, the evolution, the analogy. Where you have uh, strength is to uh, the symbolist is to structure. You can find structure. The connectionist, which is the brain, you can estimate parameter. The Bayesian is a probability. You have weight. Then evolution is genetic, you can find structure learning, and then the analogy you can map. So what are the technologies that I have? Okay. Uh, for analogy, you have KNN, SVM, evolution, you have a genetic algorithm, Bayesian, you have the HMM, hidden Markov model, uh, connection, you have all the propagation, deep learning, then symbolism, you have the inverse deduction. So algorithm that we have, can we build an intelligent machine? Change again. Okay, so is the end, end is near or not? Okay, are we getting Terminator very soon? What do you think? Okay, no much time. So in AI, something we have two things. One we call AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. This is where your Terminator that you see in the movie is all about machine like human. Then we have something we call Artificial Narrow Intelligence. Okay, where it is very good doing certain things like play Go Chess, or smart speaker, but you cannot say the machine that I trained to play Go Chess can go and do self-driving car. Cannot. Okay. So this 
So why AI took off? Because now we have a lot of data, we have a lot of high computing power, we have all the graphic card that we have. One uh, computing, uh, uh, this uh, uh, processor maybe quite core, four cores, okay? but your graphic card, you have thousands of cores. Okay? We have a lot of machine learning model, and lastly, we have a lot of trained machine learning engineers, data scientists, whatever. Okay? So basically, what is learning? Okay? You can do formalize to three, which is how you represent your data, how you evaluate, and how you optimize. So with that in mind, now, you, instead of these five algorithms, you can combine them into what we call ensemble learning. Ensemble learning means now you can use multiple training algorithms, then you can actually build one machine that uses all the five algorithms that we have. So in conclusion, so the master algorithm, okay, basically, it's not, not one algorithm, it's actually a combination of all the five algorithms, where you can now build a grand unified theory of machine learning. Okay? That means all the algorithms that you have, you can actually combine them and you can use it as one grand unified algorithm. Okay? We feel that, uh, I feel that we are living now at an age uh, where we have the, all the right condition and we have all the right hardware, talent okay, to create this algorithm. So thank you very much. You can contact me here. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Professor